there's always something going on in Wexford. Like recently, there was a situation where uh, an intermediate football semi-final didn't go ahead because there was no floodlights. And then the weekend, if you didn't, <laughs> like, just have it coming up here, you have fireworks in the middle of a game. gas isn't it like yeah. we actually had that in uh, in brennan's park a few weeks ago it was during the day it's because there was a there's a housing state like in the background behind the pitch yeah uh, across from the stand and there was fireworks going off there because you're getting closer to halloween you have to remember as well yeah lads are and, testing them out yeah and you're doing like exactly the shite really <laughs> putting things off and particularly if they know there's a match going on they think oh this is hilarious and everyone will know and yeah. but but around uh, Halloween as well, sure enough, at this stage, you might as well do a bonfire and just throw all your hurlies in there because you're at oh, nothing of them. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. So it was Declan Heffernan who tweeted in that video of that was in Cross the Beg uh, Mal Bally Mern. They beat Gory by a point one eleven to one thirteen. I, I, I'm going to say it on air now because I've told you all off air before. A fella, just uh, regards to the awfully comment that you just made, I met a fella in St. Brennan's Park recently and he just said, how are you getting on with that Shane Stapleton lad? And I said, ah, oh, sure, grand, yeah. He's so major, isn't he? And I says, ah, oh, sure, I don't know what do you mean. He says, sure, all he does is give out waffly hurling. And there you go. You're throwing throw, throw more wood onto the fire, so to speak. Sure, I'm doing is winding you up. And of course, you take the bait every time. Because as you like to say, you are big. Sure, big. So there was supposed to be 17 county finals at the weekend between both coats. But only 16 went ahead. Because, of course, in Loud, there couldn't but be a ridiculous situation whereby the county final, which was going ahead in the Gaelic grounds, which is a tip of a place. I don't know if you've ever gone in there and drawn. Oh, to it's actually, a no. dump. I was there for Loud against Westmead. It must be four or five years ago. Oh, it's, 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 it's not a great place at all. In need of massive renovation. I suppose this ties in with it. Some of the walkways around and to the hill at the back and all that, there was too much standing water. So it, the game was called off. So the boys showed up. Never heard the like of that now. Yeah, yeah, a couple of no problem was, with the pitch by all accounts. Yeah, and it's of course it's been refixed for the exact same place next week. <laughs> right, so a couple of weeks ago, or was it last week? There was a junior final to go on there, and the teams were to, were told if this uh, if there's a problem with the ground, we'll go and we have a backup plan. We'll okay. play somewhere else. It didn't happen for the senior final. It's nuts, so the boys show up and the lad that was there at the gate goes, boys, you may as well turn around. There'll be no football played here today. That's and these lads enough. building up for a county yeah. final. This was Nave Martin against, um, against Newtown Blues. And to be shown up on the day and this to actually go ahead. No, it's mad. It's a, it's it's a, it's a county <clears throat> final, a county senior final. That is nuts. And like I think Loud is a county that struggles for hearts and minds when it comes to... Gaelic football because soccer is so strong there yeah, the and you have this sort of, sort of a situation that there's too much standing water you'd swear they hadn't foreseen this has there never been rain before in Louds yeah. that this wouldn't happen oh, it's mad, so, yeah. um, it's a county final like. yeah. seriously like. Like, as they said in Kinnis Scully or in Kinnis Scully in Dunbelievable it's like a county final championship match <laughs> Nave no, Martin's actually the one, one of the people involved with the club put out a message on Facebook later saying where there is a will there is always a way so sorry for all our club supporters and opposition supporters as well as teams that today's prestigious finals have been called off at the very last minute and we apologise on behalf of the county board for their total incompetency <laughs> of not having an alternative plan to deal with an insignificant rainfall consequence maybe our GA hierarchy have been too preoccupied on whether the rugby was going ahead in Japan this morning oh, that's so, very good that's <clears> how you have yeah, a cut now. Absolutely. it didn't look like you were, they were having a cut yeah, they had a cut they sold it in on the yeah. jocks <laughs> and David Sheen um, a journalist he goes just a thought about today's postponement in Loud Loud were knocked out of the qualifiers on June 8th over four months ago why is the county final only being played in mid-October is it purely to align with the Leinster club campaign and it probably is because yeah. and they're going to be under the thing the really annoying thing is now you're getting closer to the Leinster club campaign and maybe lads might be able to enjoy the county final win or what happens if it goes to the replay yeah like the Nave Martin have never won a county title if they go and win this and all bananas. this. Bananas. They yeah. go absolutely bananas. They want to go stone mad. And they're dead right. Yeah. Uh, the Antrim final, of course. It wouldn't do if there wasn't a bit of extra time up in Antrim, would it? And finally, uh, Cargan beat Love Jarg 3.16 to 23 points. Uh, Tomás McCann had scored the point that took it to a replay. And uh, he scored 1-5 here. So that man would be hero status, yeah. I believe, up you there. Put into into, you know, just for Love Darig. 
three games in the semi final, mm. including the postponed one where the where the county chairman postponed it halfway through penalties. Uh, that was free, those free, free kicks, kicks yeah, yeah. yeah. Then they they drew they drew the drawn game of the final, and then uh, a replay which went extra time as well. Yeah, they must uh, have been out in their out in their shields by the end of it. But Love Jarg were down by four points 50, with fifty seven minutes on the clock. They're the ones that should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back. That's they brought back to three ten to nineteen points, and I saw a, a video and. Um, I went up, was it Jerome Quinn had a video up online of the, the last few moments and it was you know it was all panic stations yeah, towards yeah. the end but, but brilliant stuff Cavan football final so uh, don't you love a good tweet just uh, sort of rubbing it in you finally win and one of the players comes out with a tweet saying now we showed you <laughs> so uh, anyway so first of all Castle Rahan beat Ramer United 1-9 to 10 points and coming into the game right there was a really weird tweet uh, from someone in Rammer. there was a picture of a car that had Trump Boris Johnson, and I'm not even sure, maybe that's their manager. So it was official team transport and rammer all the way on the hood of the car and uh, Donald Trump in the windscreen. Not really sure why, but there you go. But anyway, uh, Castle Rahan won, they go back to back, and Keen Mackey tweeted out to a couple of journalists up in Cavan, are we still too old with a load of question marks after it? Oh, I love that. And, uh, <laughs> what do you think of it? <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. Like. Ah, it's brilliant, though, because that's like the big thing in the GAA is you wrote us off. People love that stuff. But, Absolutely like, love it. Were they written off? doesn't matter. If, even if he heard it or saw or half saw it or half thought he saw it, that's all you need. Yeah, and like Paul Fitzpatrick, was, uh, who wrote that book about Charlie Gallagher that's yeah. out just now, he tweeted back saying, like he was one of the journalists tagged into it and he was like, we, we all tipped you to win. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going. But isn't that the thing in a GA team? You have to find a cause. Everyone's that's writing us up. Yeah. No, no, chap. We all said you'd win. What are you t-? Like you can't for years. Yeah. We constantly write about how you're going to win this game and they come back at the end of the year win the All-Ireland. Sure, everyone knows what are you talking it's about. Unreal. This is the first year that Brian Cody could actually say that. Like, it was the only yeah. year they've ever been written off. Yeah. Funny so we've been writing yeah. about him every yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Funny thing about Castle Ratton, we talked about it in the build-up to the game. So they were beaten in three finals in a row before last year. Yeah. It's amazing. It's actually amazing how the release valve goes when you win a mm. final. Like They will probably, they were winning tight games now. They're winning tight games that they wouldn't have won before. Yeah. Now they've won two county finals in a row and they'll always feel now this team until this team breaks up that if they come down the stretch with a team and are in the game they'll always feel that they're going to win whereas mm. two years ago you could have never said that it's mad they, they got like one they scored one nine and they had nine different scores Oshin O'Connell with one one so that's a nice little spread there we move on to the down final so that was Kilku of course they're back they beat uh, Warren Point one twelve to 14 points so Belter of a game by all accounts yeah you would often see the tweets coming from journalists in the area and they're just like, what dot at a dot yeah. game dot. Um, so, um, yeah, Paul Devlin with four points there. Mickey um, Moran again. Huh? Mickey Moran again. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Wherever another... he goes, Silverware follows. Um, and beforehand, I, I see um, Stephen Poacher tweeted about an emotional moment there that um, before the throw-in, Cahill and Thomas Burns, who are the sons of the late Eamon Burns, that they came out, there was a sort of a jubilee ce- celebration of the 1994 down oh, team. Tough, yeah. yeah, and they came out on the pitch before, and Stephen Poacher, one of the most emotional moments I've ever witnessed in Newry. Huge respect to the two boys, and must, must have been a very difficult day for the family, and applause that seemed to last an eternity. So that's, that, that yeah, is that's great, tough, unbelievably yeah. difficult. It's, it's a great moment, it's tough though. And fair play to the people who organised that. Uh, the Leash football final on this weekend, Port Leash beat Kaleshin 14 points to 2-7. So very little in it, and Kaleshin in their first ever final. 16th medal for Bruno McCormick. Ah, sure, it's mad, isn't yeah. it? And by all accounts, he, he kicked three points yesterday as well. He was influential. Uh, way tighter than any of us thought it would be, to Gr- be fair. Graham Dillon was a former golf professional, isn't he? And he scored three points. Sounds mildly familiar. Yeah, I think yeah. he was. Did he play underage for Arsenal? or Some, some player that had definitely had trials at Arsenal. Um, also, Niall Rigney, manager of Port Leash. I, yeah, I, I yeah. hadn't copped that at all. That's having managed, <clears> like, obviously played for Leash Earners for years as well. Yeah. It's, um, that's a, that's a, it's, it's not what we expected. We thought, we didn't think it would be a turkey shoot. We thought Port Leash should win, you know, they keep the man yeah. present the whole way through. Like, um, that was a great, great result. Great performance from Kaleshin, though, in fairness. Yeah, Killian Whelan is a journalist in the area. He was tweeting, from winning junior football championship in 2008 to the double of intermediate and celebrity Bonish door in 2011, the door is finally opened to win the senior in 2019. For years, we've listened to the slagging about being from Carlo, or isn't that the name of the hotel in Port Leash? Today is the day to stand proud of our village and it's, uh, let its name stand its merit. There's no passion to be found playing small. So they pushed it very close. Big and time. yeah, sure, look, hopefully they'll be back again. Uh, it's 
seems they sh uh, like Porton or Portish are still winning, but it seems to have gotten an awful lot more competitive in general. Yeah. Their finals have been a lot harder won in recent years. Yeah, and since like Strad Valley beat them probably. Yeah, and especially when those finals are close, you can be shocked. Like with Strad Valley yeah. winning with that late score, was it late goal a couple oh, of years ago? Yeah, goal, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Leitrim final then. So I saw videos of trucks driving through the town. They seem to be going buck ape there as Glen Manor Hamilton beat Balnamore sixteen points to fifteen. Nice tight one too. Yeah, yeah, no, fair. Balnamore are the Balnamore are headed the role of honour, but hadn't won one in a good while. And I, I actually thought it would be a draw. To be honest with you, every way I looked at it, I could find very little to separate them. But mm. um, by all accounts, it seems to be a, a great, uh, a good final. Like, and we were just kind of chatting off air. It's not that often that you get very good county finals because it's all about results. But sixteen fifteen is uh, yeah. that's as that's you know a score every two minutes for county finals. That go, as things go, that's not bad. And Darren Mulvey sent in a tweet saying Leitrim Gales. Founded in 1997, they won their first intermediate trophy and they played senior championship and division one in uh, 2020. They sound like Leitrim's answer to Castle Knock. I was just going to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Castle Knock founded in around 1999. 98, I think. Was it 98? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, awfully football final. So your mother's for Bambi Road, 213 <laughs> to 14, didn't it? Yeah, she was delighted actually yesterday. Yeah. Um, a couple of things before we start. Road were missing uh, Ken Gary, who would have been part of the Offaly squad at times. So he was missing, and they kind of they missed his kind of kickouts and things. Now, mm. he didn't play. Came on for the last 10? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, he was concussed in the semi final. Mm. And uh, like he obviously wasn't fit to start. And Jeez, if he's not yeah. fit to start and it's concussion, you shouldn't be coming on. Yeah, you, 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 listen, yeah. That's if that's the, the reason, the, if that's to the, the best of my knowledge, um, mm. came on for Ban were down, but it was a tight game. Uh, Road went five up, I think, five or six minutes into the second half. But it was kind of it was the Keen Johnson show in the second half. Yeah. He kicked uh, he kicked two three. I'm just reading a tweet from Colin Kenny, um, who's from uh, Belmont, and it the basically it's for Ban Belmont the football. Keen Johnson got six shots of goal against Shamrock, scored six points, that's in the quarter final, got five shots of goals against Eden Derry, scored five points, got five shots of goals against Road, scored two three. That's unbelievable. What's that? Eleven it's two fourteen from playing knockout football. I don't want to build him up, but is he going to be the greatest player of all time? <laughs> um, Kieran Cunningham, the journalist, had a tweet. Um, greatest Irish sports person and all the for Ban lads at back this morning. King, King, King <laughs> Johnson. Funnily enough, Kevin Nugent actually, who played with for Man yesterday, replied to Colin and said that he got two shots of goal uh, against Shamrocks and kicked two points and got one shot of goal against Rod and kicked the score, <laughs> the score as well. They're fairly enjoying it anyway. There's a great clip going around doing the line rounds on social media. Um, Joe Matter, who's their free taker, he kicked six, I think four frees yesterday. He's a brilliant singer as well. Mm. And um, he was singing the Greenfields around for band. Uh, How's that go? Up on the stage. I know, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. But yeah, a, gr a great moment. And that was their third final in four years. They'd won everything at underage. Every, mm. Everything they could win at underage. And again, like Castle Ratton, that could be the release valve now. They're going to be difficult to beat once they've... Climb the throne, they're going to be difficult to knock off. A couple of interesting ones as well. A couple of big subs, county finals as well. Subs can make such a massive difference. David Kelly came on after 40 minutes midfield, it was massive. And uh, Jack Clancy came on as well, it was huge as well at halftime. Yeah. Um, a tough weekend for road boss Pascal Keelan. Yeah, I, I, I was, I do the horse racing with the independent as well. I was looking through and I saw that his horse that he's involved with, Red T, was running in a big grade one in Canada on Saturday night. Like, this is the best of the best, like, top yeah. top class racing. It went off favourite and was beaten. It was well beaten, actually. And then Road were beaten as well. Like, and I kind of, after I put up, I was like, geez, I hope one of these win in a way. Like, yeah. But he ended up with, with two. Uh, Two bad memories of this weekend, unfortunately. A rough one. Uh, Roscommon final this weekend. So after seven final defeats, Paul Pierce has finally got across the line with a 2-10 to 1-10 win over Roscommon Gales. Conor Payne and Hubert Darcy with the goals in the first half. Great scenes at the final whistle. Mm -hmm. You can see Pat Flanagan falling down, uh, hands on his head. The usual. Well, I suppose it is a usual enough scenario, but you'd never get tired looking at it. So great win there. And that's like, like Pat Flanagan has basically brought success everywhere he's went. Mm. And by God, he's done the rounds. He has done the rounds, in fairness. Yeah. Uh, be surprised if he's not back in inter-county management in the next couple of years again. Yeah, Tyrone, the final was on this weekend. So Trillic beat Ergil Kieran 12 points to 2-4. So six scores to 12 kind of tells the story. And just 1-2 um, from play for Ergil Kieran. 
which is an unbelievably poor return. Rory Brennan was outstanding. Derek Hanovan only came on as a sub after 40 minutes. I'm not sure why. Yeah, for Eric and there, yeah. yeah. Lee Brennan with five points, three frees and a 45. Matty Donnelly with a couple, Richie Donnelly with one, among others who were scoring. Just uh, by all accounts from a couple of people that were there, just even commenting on Twitter, they seem to think like Ulster is going to be unbelievably competitive, mm. but they definitely think they're not going to be a pushover and think they're going to be hard beaten. Ulster, Ulster club football is so competitive, yeah. so competitive. You're going to have you're going to have Kilku, obviously. You're going to have Castle Rat, and you're going to have Trillick. You could have Cross McGlen. Um, you could have Guido again. Like it's going to be so hard. You could have Scotstown again. It's going yeah, to be so hard. They're back one. in the final, yeah. man. Um, Westmead final. Gary Castle two thirteen. St. Lomans three six. So after a five year gap and after going eight points down, like John John Keane and Gary Dolan are over the team. And at half time, Desi Dolan has a word with Gary and says. Uh, <laughs> Might be time to take me off here. That's that's very rare. Yeah. Like it's usually be like he's forty years yeah. of age. He he wasn't like he hadn't scored. The team isn't going well. Something had to happen. And to be fair, if he said take me off, yeah, that's fair putting the team before yourself. No, it is because nobody wants yeah. to go in those turns because he knew it was his last game ever in Westmead. And they brought a big man in full forward by all accounts, and he caused wreck when he went in there. Mm. So. He obviously was offering something completely different to what Desi was. I think it was fairly Desi was fairly happy as well after it's his last game he'll ever play with in Westmead and he also over uh, basically Overtook beat, his, yeah, father. his father. His father at seven <laughs> and he said it's very hard to beat your father anything. But he uh, he did it in the county final sec. Unless Desi Senior is gonna come back next year. Well, you never know, never rule a man out or the fifty two year old marking the nineteen year old in the junior That's B hurling match. You just we had a seventy eight year old playing club football in Dublin last year or last week, didn't we? Yeah, Jason Byrne did a piece about yeah, that, I very, think, in the sun, good, yeah. Yeah, some great colourly stuff in there as well, yeah. yeah. But uh Loman sc- scored two penalties in the first half and Gary Castle missed a penalty. And they still won the game. Jesus, doing well. Like Seriously. three, four to five points at, uh, at half time, you must be thinking we'll concede another goal or two here and it'll be gone out the gap. Yeah. But fair play to them for coming back there. Wexford football po- final. We started off with Wexford. We'll come back to it. Castletown 316, Gus Aran or um, Rattley's 210. So, um, yeah, John Beelan, Jonathan Beelan scored 1 6. Yeah, that's Paul, Paul Beelan's uh, son, Dublin, Dublin legend, obviously. Um, ben Brosnan wasn't playing actually. Um, for for Castletown, who would have been a massive massive loss, yeah. Americans, but they still put it. There was talk leading into it last week that he he was an injury concern. Yeah, he was under pressure, yeah. Uh, the Wicklow final was on, so I uh, got a bit of information about this. So Pat's beat Arklow Geraldine's Belly Money nine points to seven. Back to back titles for the Wicklow Town Club, the first time since sixty sixty one. Uh, the man of the match at centre back was Connor French. Uh, massive crowd, apparently biggest crowd seen in years. The, uh, this. Kieran Highland was excellent for uh, Jers, and uh, 37 years of age, scored a point from full back, did a good job on Tommy Kelly apparently. Yeah, but he got his kind of day in the sun last year, to beat, was it last year, 2018, to beat Offaly in the championship, and then he played against the dubs, like he was 36 year old, coming yeah. back, like it was class. Fair going. Anthony Nolan ref the game, and uh, we've seen him at inter county level, yeah, but it was, right, yeah. it was his first ever county final. His wife is from Ratnew, and his and he's from Bolton Glass, so he couldn't he couldn't actually ref any of the games in recent years because he oh, would have been compromised. Yeah. But uh, there's a nice story from the intermediate final. Uh, of course, it's tinged in sadness too. And again, this is in Wicklow. Don Lavin beat uh, Kill Mechanic, and Marty Kaplis scored the final, uh, got the final score um, of the thirteen points to eight win. Now his brother um, Louis uh, passed away tragically a couple of years ago, well, 2018, at the age of 23 one of the main players and took his own life so very nice for for Marty Kaplis to get that final score and uh, no doubt Louis would have been on their minds but um, yeah I mean it, it's something that I think hits pretty much every parish in Ireland and it's so tough so nice that they've had a, a good weekend to celebrate and no doubt uh, remember Louis. Uh, the Dublin Football Championship um, at the weekend the semi-finals so I'll just, or sorry quarterfinals I'll just run through the I'll just run through the, the, the results. So well, I'd like to apologise to Thomas Davis as well, who I've probably written off. <coughs> we, last wrote, of weeks yeah, <laughs> we wrote them off. Yeah, we did write Those them off. Those two boys in our game wrote <laughs> us off. Well, the quarterfinals this weekend, some of them didn't deliver at all, some of them really did. Kilnacud Croaks beat Clontarf 16 points to 8. Jack McCaffrey sent off for a high tackle after 33 Served, minutes. I didn't see it. Yeah, well, seven, 7 points to 6. I mean, it's a high tackle, I suppose. It's one of those ones sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. But 7 points to 6 at half time. Paul Mannion only came on at that point, and of course, the red card. They were going to coast home at that point, which they did. Clontarf with 2 points in the second half. Thomas Davis, your lads, 3 12. Castle Knock uh, 117. So Owen Kirby with 1 5. Kieran Farley with 1 1. And Brendan Kirby with a goal. 
Yeah, that's Thomas Davis knocking out. Upset. Yeah, okay. Castle Knocker in the final a couple of years ago. Uh, St. Jude's against Vincent's. Now, St. Jude's 11 points, Vincent's 4. And I put out on uh, on Twitter what the people make of Jeremy Connolly's performance. And a few people hitting back hard at me now saying, do you know a typical thing to write off a player? Like he's going to be 33 next June. He's had an unbelievable career. Been so good on so many massive occasions. And I would say one of the guys who turned Dublin into the force that they were. Mm -hmm. I'm sure loads of people have that opinion. But he's been away for Intercounty for the guts of a couple of years. Came back for the Super 8s game against Tyrone. Was playing in the own midfield. I thought he was poor enough, to be honest. Uh, he featured in the All Ireland final against Kerry. I know he had that wonderful kick pass, which may have been for one of the other lads and happened to go to the, a Dublin hand all the same. I thought he was poor enough, made a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes. I didn't think he looked physically at the same level in this game. I don't think he looks at the same level of conditioning. And uh, maybe uh, that's harsh, but like, <clears throat> I think when you're at that level of the game and you're going to get praise so much for your brilliance at times people are going to then say is is he quite at the same level and can he do it again next year i don't know like I, I, the, the, he, what platform did he have his team was so poor mm. i mean to score four points in the whole game he played center back earlier on this year as well yeah yeah when he was finney's like four points four he's been a pure powerhouse the this last is an all-ireland team yeah. a team that won an all-ireland five years ago yeah yeah I, I think a lot of their players are definitely like some of their main players like jerry brennan retired uh, Mossy Quinn scored a lovely point earlier on. Um, Jim McConley, these are all lads who are a little bit older now. And um, Connolly's an interesting one. Like he got an All Ireland this year, he must be counting his lucky stars in man, in many respects. In yeah. His part of sixth row. Um, will he five in a row? Five. Sorry, five in a row. Will he be like unbelievably motivated to <clears> go back <throat> next year, or will he think uh, that's it? Jiz, I'm after I'm after getting a swan song that I never thought I would mm. get. I thought it was going to be like out in the cold or whatever. Like I think he could get back to maybe not quite his old level, but he could get back to the level where he's brilliant at inter-county level or really, really good. But of course, yeah. Like I don't think 33 is too old. With There's modern no way S and C, well. you're talking about. S you were talking about S and C in his condition. There's no way he was doing the same conditioning work that he would have been with Dublin Absolutely for the last few years. No way. And in in many ways, he, he he did he not get away with it this year in many ways. You know, he came on that early semi-final, or he came on that early final. Uh, he did grand, he did grand, but there's also a couple of big turnovers, and you know, it'd be, I just wonder. I, I'd, I'd hope that he has a point to prove. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see him coming back and going gung ho for the whole year. Uh, we'll come to the last uh, semi or quarter final in a second, but just the the semi finals now are going to be Bally Bowden against St Jude's and Thomas Davis against Kilmacud Croaks. So Croaks. You'd imagine they're going to get through the <laughs> to the final and beat Thomas <laughs> Davis, but uh, uh, anyway, we'll that we'll talk about that another day. But Bally Bowden beat uh, Nafina three fifteen to one fifteen after extra time. This game was on television on RT on Saturday evening. It was absolutely brilliant, and I'd say Nafina are kicking themselves because they had this game. They were up they the whole way, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, Collie Baskell scored a hat trick uh, of goals to them in extra time. He's just such a fantastic player. This is a fellow who got a hat trick against Kuleri last year in the hurling yeah. uh, Leinster semi final as well. Remember? Yeah, and he was on the Dublin panel, and I think either he was, I think he might have taken himself off the panel due to a lack of game time because I can't imagine he would have taken himself or that he would have been dropped. I wouldn't off think it. so because he came on in a lot of league games, and I think he played championship in 2018 as well. And by all accounts, he was he looked like I tell you what he looked like. He looked like he was going to be the Paddy Small. Yeah, this year. he looked like he was going to be first or second forward on. Yeah, well, Conor McHugh was unbelievable for Nafina, and I put out um, a poll afterwards. If you had to pick one, Conor McHugh or Cali ba Baskell, and fifty-three percent went for Conor McHugh. But it just tells you that it's that tight. These are two absolutely brilliant players. And this is a, Conor McHugh is a fellow who's only on the extended Dublin panel. If he was in any other county, yeah. he'd be guaranteed to start. He's absolutely said, class. Yeah. Like left foot, right foot, doesn't matter. And like there was such a, it was a disgrace at the end of, of normal time. So Nafina were going up the field looking for a winning score. And you could see on the screen, far side, one of the Nafina players is carrying the ball up. The referee is kind of, is, is, is following the play. And behind that again, outside of the, on the blind side of the referee, um, was it Declan O'Mahony was pulling down uh, Conor McHugh. And he wasn't just pulling him once and that was it. He was pulling him and wrestling him and manhandling him down onto the ground. And what ends up happening? Mahoney ends up getting a yellow card. McHugh ends up getting his second yellow card. Red carded, gone. Now, he could have ended up at the, on the end of a move to score a winning point. Instead, 
he's not back out in the field for extra time and Bally Bowden go on and win it. This is so it's an absolute disgrace. This is a, a referee thing that has to change. If there's two lads rolling around on the ground together, it doesn't mean that both have to get a yellow card. That is a standard GA yeah. giving both yellow. Yeah, standard. but I, I think ultimately Conor McHugh probably got thick and probably did dish out a bit of punishment back. But this situation never would have happened if Declan Mahoney didn't just pull him down onto yeah. the ground. And I know what happened, but like, how much... How far can you get incited before eventually you have to be allowed to stand up for yourself? Yeah, no, I and agree with you. I know there's still got to be a yellow card for violent play if that's what happens in that situation or any other situation. But the injustice is unbelievably strong in this situation. Um, they know they, they were, were bring on another player. Yeah, but, but he, he, Conor McHugh is your star. Yeah. Your star forward. Like. And actually, there was another incident at the end of normal time. I think uh, Colin Baskell was going for a level and point from a free from about 40 yards out. And the umpire was standing underneath. So, like, he had all day to prepare himself for the shot. And he was still unsure whether the ball went over or not. Now, there can be occasions where it goes over the post. But he just seemed so unsure. And I was like, get your position right. You've won job. Like. Um, and then Bally Bowden keeper, Dara Gogan, he knocked over a 45 um, in injury time. To take the yeah. yeah, so fair play to him taking that extra time. But Bally Bowden, Colly like, Baskell, ground it out again like they're unreal. Even like yeah. the year they won the All Ireland, so many results that just ground them out. Yeah, and when I was tweeting about that situation with uh, with McHugh getting sent off, PJ Cunningham, who used to be the sports editor of the Sunday Tribune, he goes, uh, "Sickening, um, sickening." Part was O'Mahony saying McHugh should be given yellow after he got his. Where does winning at all costs stop? There used to be a thingy called sportsmanship. This was the height of gamesmanship, which I thought was a, a fair way of putting it. Niall Curran actually uh, tweeted saying, Bally Bowden players wearing GPS trackers. We don't even have 15 footballs. And you did that piece with Stephen Porter recently, and he said that Carlo don't have GPS. Yeah, they don't have access but, to them. But I've seen other clubs in Dublin, and during training sessions, they have their GPS trackers. So there you go, that's the difference between the haves and the have nots. Rich man's world. Yeah, Bernard Flynn, a former Mead player, he tweeted, four big clubs in Parnell Park tonight, this is Saturday. A couple of hundred uh, thousand population between all four, thousands of club members between all four, and nobody bothers their arse to go and support their club. Hashtag embarrassing. And Paul Gill replied, where are the 11,000 season ticket holders we keep hearing about? You know, the way the games can't be moved out of Croke Park yeah. for Dublin. Well, I t- I'll ask you this. You've um, you've been involved with Kula teams where Kula are a very, very high-profile high team. Yeah. Like, how many ma- how many people would be at a Kula county quarter-final? <sighs> Fairly sparsely populated, those ones. But I-, I wonder, is part of it down to, like, so there are a huge, huge amount of kids at these underage academies. Like, there could be situations where you have hundreds of kids um, at a training ground on a Saturday morning. Yeah. So there, I think that the playing populations are growing massively. But I wonder are the previous generations are as many of them that have started sending their kids to to play a GEA, which is exploding. Do they have a culture of going to matches? Like there mm-hmm. obviously are many, many, many families. But I wonder, proportionally speaking, down home every single family goes to GEA because there's absolutely no, nothing else to do. If yeah, we're honest. that's a fair point. Jack. I I just don't know. Is there is there some correlation between it? And as I said, that's not to tar everyone with the one brush, but I just wonder, is there something to it? On a side note, um, just you're talking about underage academies and stuff like that, I was trying to find the Dublin fixtures just last week, and yeah. I went to the Dublin GA website, <clears> and I'd say I had to go to like the fifth page, I was the Tuesday or Wednesday, and I'd say I had to go to the fifth page to find them, just because of the amount of underage yeah. games that are going yeah, on. It's yeah. actually unbelievable. Yeah, Even at great. this time of the year, it's class. And they're all, like a lot of those are like under nines, under 11s, mm. under 13s. Instead. Oh, you could have like a single age group, let's say an under 8 team with, with certain clubs in Dublin, and they would, and, and I'm not talking about the under 7s that play with them, but just the under 8s yeah. alone, there could be 100 plus kids That's in that. Unreal, yeah. And you think about, you think about some of the, 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 primary schools down the country they wouldn't even have a hundred kids no, between wouldn't. first and sixth no, no, class no, no. Uh, Cork football championship so it's going to be a repeat of the 1988 final because Nemo Rangers beat Douglas 3-12 to 7 points and Duhallow beat Nooses Town 12 points to 7 so Nemo against Duhallow in the final they're beating for Douglas like, yeah. we thought it could be <clears throat> coming towards their time like, but no um, I'm just going to bring up the Premier Intermediate grade as well for, for an interest in an interesting appearance this weekend. Air Oak beat Bantry 216 to 311, and Bantry looked good. But uh, Kieran Sheehan, the former Cork oh, yeah. star, he came on for Air Oak and, and apparently was quite good. He didn't score, but he came on very good. Now, he obviously wouldn't be in top physical shape because I think he went down to the AFL with the Carlton Blues, I think he was with. Yeah, he had awful injuries. Yeah, injury problems. So he's, he's, he's obviously nowhere near himself at the moment. 
But and he was class. Ah, yeah. Like, do you remember when Cork lost to Dublin in I think twenty thirteen All Ireland quarter final? Maybe. Yeah. Like my memory of it is, and people can correct me on this, was that he was kind of the lone wolf up front as they were getting battered, and um, just such a huge loss over the years. Um, but that'll be uh, that was in the Premier Intermediate, and they're all. I think they're now pushing to go up to Senior A. There's a new grading system in Cork next mm. year. Like all county uh, setups. Sure, look, it's hard to keep track of them all. Convoluted. Yeah, one is as complicated as the next. Uh, quick look at the Kerry Championship. St. Kieran's beat Kilcommon 21 points to 113. So the quarterfinal draw is now complete. Killarney Legion against St. Brendan's. Dingle against East Kerry. Croaks against Kenmare Shamrocks. And South Kerry against Kieran's. Monaghan semi-final, Scottstown beat uh, Bally Bay 3-12 to 1-13, that was a replay, the goals from um, Michael McCarville, Shane Carey and Conor McCarthy, so Scottstown chasing five in a row and against Clintibbert in the final. Uh, the Mead semi-finals were on this weekend. The yeah, the Summerhill took down Simonstown, that was a, it was a tight game by all accounts, it was 2-12 to 2-10, I think Kevin Ryan got two crucial goals and they're going to play Rattoats in the final, Rattoats, this is Rattoats first final, mm. so they beat uh, Colin McKill and um, not too short, not know too much, too much about the game but they beat them by seven so they're yeah. relative, relatively comfortable, but a uh, novel enough pairing, Summerhill will be strong favourites going into that. Though. Yeah, and Sarah Duggan sent in a tweet about Newcastle West, the first county senior title ever since the inception of the Camogie team. Uh, some achievement they beat a hand nine points to Newcastle West 115 under the management of Limerick footballer uh, Jamie Lee first year with his team Hashtag yeah like Newcastle game. West is um, Newcastle West is like football country mm. pure football country you yeah. know there you go right so that's it for Club Talk Football this week if there's any stories we missed let us know and don't forget to follow us on YouTube by clicking on that circle just there on the left or right side of the screen whichever it is you'll see it yourself <laughs>